God is good all the time. Good morning, and uh, uh, glad to see you all here. And we'll go ahead and start, and I'm sure people will come in as usual. You know, it's a beautiful morning out, and uh, and we're here to worship the Lord. So let's begin with our call to worship that comes from Psalm 19. If you would, I'll stand as we join together in our call to worship. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Psalm 19.8. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us to come here to worship you. And Lord, we can't do that on our own, so we ask that you would send your spirit, come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. Be the center of our worship and the center of our lives as we leave here and continue to worship you by living out what you have taught us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope, uh, well, uh, you know, I was watching yesterday, I was thinking about this. Um, I was watching a bit of the Notre Dame game and they they allowed faculty, students, uh, staff, and the band, and uh, I think that was it, parents. And they were all spread out. Of course, that's a big stadium. And those people were trying to do the wave. And it just didn't work. But let's take a moment and wave at each other. And, and wave at the camera in the back there. And our opening hymn is, This is My Father's World, number two in the hymn, no. may be seated. As we go into our time of prayer, um, I've heard from Daryl this week, and he's doing well, uh, getting along, and um, actually texted me this morning and uh, how he misses uh, coming, but uh, be, he says it'd be a couple more weeks, or at least another week, that he... Uh, he thank, he's thankful that uh, we keep him in our prayers. Also, uh, last week we lifted up Lily May, and you say she's getting. Have we made coffee now to the satisfactory <laughs> level? How did you put it? Oh, good, good deal. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And Liz thinks she's going to go home in another week or so. So I'm not sure. <laughs> and how is Olivia getting along? 
We got to watch it for a couple hours last night. Really? She's very tiny. <laughs> My baby didn't drink an ounce of milk at the time. They just drank a box. <laughs> Yeah, well. <laughs> she got down, though. She don't lose anymore. She got down to 411, and I thought that was way too little. Mm-hmm. But she's on the uphill, you know. Yeah. Her cat weighs more than she does. But <laughs> her mother was weighed in that way when she was born. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And how about Lois? How about Lois? Is... On me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And it's okay. She is still in the hospital, still critical, but uh, they started uh, feeding her through her veins. She hasn't been eating good since she's been in there, which is about two weeks. And I talked to her daughter yesterday, and she said that she seems, she seems to be gaining a little bit of strength now. Yes. She's still on these. So I'll put in this mask and everything, but uh, again, they're looking with her. Mm-hmm. Of course, she can't talk very much, but uh, mm-hmm. she does get to see the family, and they think that's helping her a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And talk to somebody or hear them talk. So just keep her on the prayer. She's still yeah. not out of the wood yet. Can you send cars up to the hospital now? Well, they like oh, yeah. the patients have cars up Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. they encourage it. Is she in Bloomington Hospital? She's, no, she's in Florida. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not, not good okay. Um, and I visited with uh, Gary and Jeannie Monday, and uh, Butch and Connie were there, and uh, we and Jason, and we uh, had communion, and uh, they were they left early the next morning, and I got a text from Jeannie said they made it there okay. It was wasn't the best trip, but have you heard anything? Since then? It, it sounds like a, a pretty good week, you know. What okay. I, they tried, I think they tried something a little different to come back. He was a senior in, and I think there was a thing to try and. Um, <coughs> I thought it was cold. I <laughs> they heated it the tumor for an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, <clears throat> but I think it's a lot better. Good. Good deal. <laughs> Are there any, any others to lift up this morning? I had a text from a friend of mine that requested prayer from uh, Jeremy, I think it was. Uh, she has some type of cancer, I don't know what it is, but they, they, the person expressed that they strictly believe in prayer uh-huh. and they're trying to get some new churches to pray for Sean. Okay. Um, it's very bad, I think, that they're looking for their Thank you. Any others? Let's go. Catch him open back up for visitation. So I got to see you last Friday. Good. Uh, she was in pretty good spirits. She looked good, and she couldn't stop talking about all her parties she had gotten in that day. She was right. always writing her day, and she can't really speak to new people. Yeah. Get those parties. So keep them coming. But she was, she looked good. Good. Uh, I missed her day. That's good. Great. <clears throat> Any others? Yeah, Amy. I want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Amy, <laughs> the middle child. Sometimes, sometimes the favor, sometimes the <laughs> It has um, been a while, I thought. No, I, I knew you. I knew you. Knew you. Knew you. <laughs> <laughs> so my praise is one, um, my Aunt Patty came to visit from Southern Indiana. She's the epitome of the Southern Indiana aunt. She inspected my house and the <laughs> building. <laughs> but she said uh, she got in the truck, she had to pick her up in the building, <laughs> that she wanted to go to church and I knew exactly where I wanted to bring her. And uh, you guys may not know it, um, we're from Salisbury, we go to church in Bloomfield, I'm, I'm sorry, Bloomington. My family and I do but, um, to share in this church, which means and has been a part of our life in so many ways. It does feel a little bit like coming <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you. I think about every Sunday, or the last couple of Sundays, I've been reminded of an event here a few years ago where I pushed a lady around in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Want to reenact that? No, I don't think so. <laughs> 
Any others to lift up this morning? I know. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure all how it transpired, but someone from Ken Johnson and Jared Arthur, we have a new dehumidifier coming to the church. I noticed that. Yeah. Thank you all. Any others? I know her surgery is going to be very frank for Joe and the two girls. I'll be down for about two weeks. <laughs> Any others? If there are no others, as always, you're welcome to join me here at the altar. If there are any prayers that you'd like to lift to the Lord from here, of these that we have mentioned or any that you have on your heart, you're welcome to join us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. And our thanks is, is not enough, but... You know our hearts, Lord, as we reach to you in praise and thanksgiving. We ask once again, Lord, that you would hear our prayers. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to receive and accept your will in these things that we lift to you. We give you thanks, Lord, that Daryl and Lily May are doing better and recovering. We ask your continued blessing on them. We lift uh, Olivia and Lois to you as they as they get better, Lord. And we we lift Olivia to you that uh, she might um, uh, continue on a track to be healthy. And we lift Lois to you, Lord, as she recovers. And we thank you, Lord, for the love of uh, the family that surrounds her. We thank you, Lord, for Bev and the uh, example that she sets for us. And we give you thanks, Lord, that uh, she is able to enjoy the love that that surrounds her. We lift Gary to you, Lord, and Sean, for your healing. They are in a situation where they need your healing, and we, we need a miracle. And we lift Jeannie to you as she goes through this time of supporting Gary. Lord, we pray for uh, Leon as he faces surgery and and we ask your blessing on his doctors, those who will care for him and his family as they support him and surround him with love. And we give you thanks for our families, Lord. The love that you share with us as you pour your love out and to us that we share with one another through family. We give you thanks. All these things, Lord, we have lifted to you in voice, but we have prayers on our hearts, known only to us. We ask, Lord, that you would hear them now as we lift them to you in this moment of silence. Holy and Heavenly Father, we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, we will observe our time of giving. And uh, I always remind you, I think everybody knows that uh, the offering plates are out front, so leave that off. But... We do give thanks to the Lord, and we do that through verse and through song. And so what we'll do is we'll we'll, uh, um, say our offertory verse, and then sing sanctuary, and then stand for the doxology. So let's join together in our offertory verse. 
I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Psalm 116, 17, and 18. Lord, we do praise you that you are so generous to us. We give you thanks, Lord, that those things that you pour out on us, we we have the opportunity to return a portion back to you. We thank you, Lord, through our gratitude, through our faith, and through our love. We ask that you would receive our gifts and, and uh, give us a gift of discernment and the way to use them to glorify you and to bring forth the good news of Jesus Christ to this community and to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you would remain standing as I read the gospel this morning that comes from the 18th chapter of Matthew, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? But Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, a servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. And the servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And this fellow servant fell to his knees and begged, Be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all that he owned. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you, unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word. And today, Lord, as we ponder these words, may we do so through the power of your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guide us through these words that we may take into our hearts and into our lives, what you know that we need to grow closer to you and serve you even more completely. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm-hmm. You may be seated. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Uh, so this is kind of a you know you, you you hear this story of the master and the two servants and it seems a little hard but uh, it follows what Jesus has done here um, before this. The context that that it follows is that Jesus has talked about. If there's a problem in the church, if someone offends you or sins against you, who is in the church? Now, it's important to realize he's talking about the people in the church, the body of Christ here. Uh, and that's what, when Peter asked him about this, he says, what if one of my brothers or sisters? He's still talking about the church. Because Jesus, remember, he gave that command on the night that he was betrayed. When he sat at the table, he said, this is my command, that you love one another. And so he wants to make sure that those followers of his, and this is the church universal, not just this church or another church, but it starts here is what he's saying. It starts right here. Can you imagine in this world that we have of division and confusion and chaos and hate if the church would be the, the place that people could look to and see people come together who had different views, who had different feelings, but still respected and held one another, you know, in love. And that's what Jesus is saying. You need to be a beacon. You need to be the light in this darkness. And my church needs to do this because how are you going to not forgive when God has forgiven you? And so that's where he begins. He says, it begins here. It begins right here and right now. And Peter comes to him and he says, well, you know, after Jesus gives this, uh, this, this kind of a structure, he says, you know, prior to this, he says, if someone sins against you, go to them and talk to them about it. If that doesn't resolve it, then, then take two or three people along. If that doesn't resolve it, bring it before the church. Well, I can tell you what, if somebody comes to me and says that I've offended them, I'm going to try to find out, you know, how we can reconcile, because maybe it's something I said in error, maybe it's something that I didn't mean when I said, but I don't want to go before the church, you know. But Jesus makes this, this process so that every opportunity is given to the one who, to the offender, to reconcile with the person who has been slighted. And that's what this is about. This is about reconciliation. It's not about revenge. It's not about retribution. It's about reconciliation. And so he's saying here that we need to forgive. And we just said that. We read it in Matthew 6, 12. We just said this. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We see that we say that every Sunday, don't we? Onita charged me this week. One of the things I had to do in our homeschooling experience is I had to go through the the Lord's prayer with our second grader Carly and explain what each piece meant. And when I got to that part, I could see the wheels turning. You know, she was like. And I knew what she was thinking. You mean I got to forgive my sister? <laughs> All those nasty things she does to me. But yes, that's what Jesus is saying. We need to forgive. We may not like it. But see, the thing is, in order for there to be forgiveness, what is there? There's reconciliation. There, you know, God doesn't forgive us until we come in repentance. And so you see. Uh, what, what we see here is one of the parties is coming saying, I'm sorry. You know, I really didn't mean to do that. If, if this is a problem between us, let's work it out. And, and Jesus is saying, then you must forgive. You must forgive them and move on. And, and so Peter comes and he says, Lord, you know, what if I forgive somebody seven times? You know, Peter, good old Peter, he thinks he's got it covered, man. He says seven times because... In that context, the rabbinical law was you had to forgive someone three times. So Peter's like three times two plus one, you know, I got this. And Jesus says, no, 
you must forgive them. In this, in this uh, version, it says 77 times, and in other versions, it says 7 times 70. Now, 77 times is 7, 77. 7 times 70 is 490. The point is, Jesus is saying, you got to forgive them. No matter what. No matter how many times. You have to forgive them. And we read this in Colossians 3.13. Paul writes, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And that's what Jesus is saying in this parable of the Master. The Master says, how can you not forgive him when I've forgiven you? So Jesus is saying, and Paul understands this, that this is a godly thing. This is the thing following God, following the example of God, this forgiveness. Following the example of God. And he goes on to say in Matthew 6, 14 through 15, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, I mean, that's serious stuff. What he's saying is, you gotta, you got to do like God does. you got to follow God. you got to follow me. And, of course, none of us ever have to forgive each other, do we? That never happens. But we know it does. We have those conflicts. We have those differences. We have differences of opinion. We have ideological differences. We have theological differences. And, you know, when I get together with other pastors, sometimes, and I haven't done this for a while, but they, 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 a lot of times they meet for uh, um, lunch on Wednesdays. And, you know, we talk about our differences, like with baptism and different things. And uh, we do it in kind of a lighthearted way, you know, kind of kidding each other. Because what Jesus is saying is we're all moving towards the same goal. That is to build the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. To share his love and his grace and his good news with others that they might receive his salvation. And how can we do that if we're disjointed, if we're hating one another, if we're calling each other names? He says, my family needs to stay together. And you may have disagreements, but you need to deal with it. And you need, ultimately, to reconcile it and forgive one another. That's the, that's the bottom line in this. We do have those good-natured things. You know, I, I uh, suggested to my dad one time who was, you know, he, he lettered four years. He was a P-man at Purdue. He lettered four years in cross country. And, uh, and of course, I went to IU, and that just about killed him. But uh, um, I suggested one time, I said, you know, Purdue and Notre Dame and IU and Kentucky, they're about as strong as rivalries as IU and Purdue. And he said, oh, no, no, this can't happen. You know, it's almost like I suggested that the, that the axis of the, Earth would change or, or turn, you know. So we have those good-natured things that we that we uh, have fun with. But Jesus is saying, if someone sins against you, if they harm you, if in some way you feel so uh, slighted, you got to deal with it. Don't let it fester. Don't let it grow. And I always said that when you have a problem with someone, and you forgive them, then who bears that problem? You no longer bear it. You've left it behind. When you forgive that person, you know, it's done as far as you're concerned. If they don't receive it, that's up to them. But when you forgive them, you can move on. And Jesus, so Jesus is showing us not only the way that he wants his church to be, not only the way he wants his children to act, but also how we can live a healthy life. Because anger and bitterness and all that stuff really is unhealthy. I mean, it's physically unhealthy for you to bear that. 
So part of this is Jesus is saying, let it go. It may be difficult. It may be hard. But sometimes it's time to let it go. How can we move ahead when we're still holding things that hold us behind? But what all this teaches us is the grace of God. And I, once again, I'll share with you that definition of grace. It's the unmerited favor of God toward humans. The operative word there is unmerited. We do not deserve his favor. We do not deserve his love. And yet, by grace, he pours it out on us. And that's what he's saying is, treat each other like I've treated you, with grace. Matthew 5, 48 tells us, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That perfection is love. That perfection is forgiveness. That perfection is grace. Like I say, Jesus is talking about the church, but we carry it from the church out. And we, we should be an example to the world of how people can come together with one common goal, and that is building the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, through his salvation, and sharing the good news of that salvation. We're all different, you know, but we're all one in Christ. And he wants us to stay that way. Ephesians 4.32 tells us, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in God forgave you. Be an example and follow the example of Christ. You remember in the first chapter of Acts when he's talking to the disciples, before he ascends, he's saying, Share this good news, share the gospel in Jerusalem and Judea, and Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. And that's, what, that's, that's the way God works. Share it first at home. Share it at home. When you, get it, when you get it right there, then begin to share it otherwise. It's funny to me sometimes, and I see this, that people can have like a rub against each other in the church, but they're more than willing to carry that the love out. Jesus is saying, fix the church first. Be one in my name. Love each other. Forgive each other. Have grace towards each other. The greatest example that Christ gave us of that was when they took nails and they drove him. They drove those nails through his hand to a piece of wood and he said Father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing what grace what love you know I I, I was called and asked to do a funeral this week of a lady that we knew in Bloomington when I served up there, Ann Carpenter, and um, she was just a sweet lady. And um, when I talked to her, I spoke her, to her on the phone last week because she wanted to call me. And this was on Thursday. She passed on Saturday. But she wanted to tell me that thank you for being my pastor and my friend. And I asked her, because uh, maybe about three or four years ago, we had built her a ramp to get in and out of her house. And I asked her, did the ramp hold up, you know? And she said yes. And her daughter was there with her. And I heard her turn to her daughter and say, make sure that ramp goes to somebody who needs it. And I thought, there, in her dying moments, She's thinking of someone else. That's the love God wants us to share with one another. That grace, that undying love that he has for us that we can share with one another. Would you pray with me? 
Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your love and grace on us. Sometimes, Lord, we need a reminder. And we know, we know Lord, that, that uh, you, it seems when you charge us to forgive forever, that that's an impossible task. But help us, Lord, to see it as a great opportunity to share your love and grace and to approach everyone with respect and dignity. Of your children, may we be the light in this dark world. May people look at your people, empowered through your Holy Spirit to love one another and see the example of love that you wish on everyone and the grace that you wish on everyone and the salvation that you wish for everyone. We pray this in the name of our salvation, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our final hymn today is It Is Well With My Soul, number 381. Let's all stand as we join together. So go with that love of the Father that He pours out on us. Go with the grace of the Son who went through all that even though we did not deserve it through His love for us.
and for the Father. And go with the empowerment and the comfort, the guidance of the Holy Spirit to love one another, to reconcile with one another and forgive one another so that we might be the light on the hill that Jesus desires. In the name of Jesus, go. Amen. Amen.